Hi, my name is Bill Coltis and I was producer of the television series Art to Light. One of our guests was Morgan MacDonald. Morgan MacDonald's iconic Sealers Monument statue in Elliston Bonavista Bay is but one of many memorable statues produced at his Newfoundland Bronze Foundry just outside of St. John's. In this retrospective presentation, he shows us how and why his work is found on a home in many parts of Canada. I'm Laura Coltis, your host for Arts Delight. This week's guest is brand sculptor Morgan MacDonald. There were many stories done on Morgan, but because making a large bronze statue can be a long process, many of those television presentations are piecemeal. So we decided to follow the sculpting process from start to finish. Morgan begins by putting clay onto the iron armature. This brings him to the stage where he sculpts the actual detail of the figure, making it the most artistically demanding of the whole process. The model is then covered in silicone, which basically takes a detailed impression of the figure. The silicone figure is then covered by plaster to get it ready for the waxing process. Hot wax is then poured into the silicone plaster configuration. Once the wax has cooled, the plaster and silicone is removed, revealing a wax model that almost looks like the final product. From the wax model, ceramic compressions are then made, which are used for the bronze pouring. Molten bronze, which reaches temperatures of 2,000 degrees centigrade or more, is then poured into the ceramic cast, making it the most dramatic part of the whole process. If you stay tuned, you'll get to see a sculpture that is truly an enduring, moving piece of art. Believe me, it's fascinating. Welcome back to the show. Let's start with Morgan showing us how he begins the long process of making a bronze statue. The most difficult part of uh, uh, well, I, what I find of sculpture is is getting the structure or the you know the pose or the main composition, and and this is really done by posing the armature, which is this metal, you know, the, the metal that you see within this right. you know this skeleton you see, you know, holding up the clay. Oh, yeah. You know, one of the, one of the principal things that you know anybody starting off with sculpture will get wrong is that they, they, they think that they can start with a, you know, a ball of clay like this yeah. and create a large structure. Sure. But unlike uh, painting where gravity is not uh, uh, inhibiting you know, the free flowing right. you know, clouds and birds, okay. uh, I have to think about how this you know, physically supports itself. So right. the, the, the very first thing that you're fighting against with sculpture is gravity. It's, it's the number one thing that uh, you have to take into account when you're making this. It has to stand up. It has to. Uh, it has to withstand, uh, you know, the the forces that are on it. Uh, there's a great quote from Michelangelo that uh, he basically says, if I can paraphrase it, uh, take a sculpture and roll it down a hill, and everything that's left is the sculpture. <laughs> so this is kind of what he's what he's getting at is the fact that the you know the piece has to be you know the core of it the the main thrust of the piece has to be yeah. right. Uh, again one of the things you always see people doing uh, when they first start out with with this is you know I'm, I'm laying big chunks of clay on to try to get a structure. Most people what they do is they'll they'll try to smooth it out. They're like you know they're I'm 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 smoothing the clay mm -hmm. to a point where it's going to be refined, so smooth, and the vi the form is going to you know there it's, it's just going to appear some some way out of it. It's going to but 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 
the the reality is it's 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 in the chunks of stuff that you add to it or take away, and and one one of the things you'll rarely see, you know, somebody starting out sculpting is just doing something like that, mm -hmm. and and just car carving hunks off of it, even though they're modeling, and and this is this is where I you know I get the question uh, a, a lot. Uh, about stone, like uh, what do you find, have you ever sculpted stone, do you find that harder? And, and the, the answer is it's infinitely harder than, than modeling, which is, you know, which is that, this form of sculpture, which is just you know, taking you know, a ductile material and adding it or, and removing it. So there's a subtractive and an additive process to this. Mm -hmm. And uh, with stone, the, uh, the, the thought process is even more difficult because you're, you, you, it's a one-way road. You can only take away, mm -hmm. and you can never add it, add it back. So, so the, you have to be very careful of you know, the removal process because you could right. remove the piece that, you really, that really should stay there, Certainly. which is part of the form. Mm -hmm. So this, is, this process can be, let's say, forgiving. It, it's, it's very forgiving that way, and mm -hmm. it's, it's more forgiving than drawing, actually. The, the only, sort of the only con or, you know, to, you know, in the pro and con versus, you know, the ease of use is, is the armature. The armature is a major impediment to, to capturing the form. It's, it's like this, you know, a bit of engineering thrown in with, mm -hmm. with uh, creating the piece. And in fact, when these things get so large, it actually is literally an engineering problem uh -huh. because then, then, you're, you, sure then, you're, then you're talking about stresses on material you know, material sciences and, you know, whether it's going to hold up to, you know, wind loads, snow loads, right. and, yeah. and, and things that a painter would never have to, <laughs> have to take into account. The next stage is probably the most artistically satisfying part of the whole process. Stay tuned as Morgan gives more definition to this particular clay sculpture. Hi, my name is Bill Coltus, author of the book Revenge Finds a Home. The story opens up with a bird watcher walking through the woods and he comes across a body that has an arrow through its neck. Then enters Inspector Bob Lynch. It's a very complicated investigation which goes from Newfoundland, British Columbia, Dakota and down to Brazil. It's an intricate story and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. If you want a copy, you can go to Amazon, Indigo Chapters, Flanker Press, or any fine bookstore in your area. Welcome back to our show, I'm Morgan McDonald. The next step of the sculpting process is probably the most demanding, at the same time being the most artistically satisfying part of the process. Um, <clears throat> this must be the kind of very rewarding part, uh, uh, you know, uh, you're, you're classified to say as a bronze sculpture, uh, but uh, uh, you know, and there's uh, the technical part of it, and uh, you know the slog part. I suppose pouring the bronze and whatever, but uh, this seems like a real uh, aspect of your art. This must be a fun part for you, a rewarding part. Yeah, this this is really where it's at. I think it's you know it's the most fun. Um, you know, it's where the the real, I mean, the artwork, the sculpture comes together in uh, you know in the creative process. This is. You know, because what you see is what you get, and that's that's the finished pro product. Right. Um, you know, unlike you know painting, when you know you're you're finished the 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 painting, it's it's done, and you can s stand back and and enjoy it and appreciate the work. Uh, one of the things that I, you know, it's sort of more difficult <laughs> from a mentally challenging point of view because. When I'm done this and I've 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 finally you know satisfied or or leaving the sculpture you know abandoning it shouldn't say satisfied but uh, it's it's still not finished it's, but a painting is is done when you're mm -hmm. when you've you've put that last brush stroke mm -hmm. unlike sculpture when I've done the last stroke with the you know the, these these sculpting tools it's it's not done. <laughs> That's right. You got a lot more steps to <laughs> There's go. There's a through. lot more yeah. to do. So this is, mm -hmm. you know, this is where, you know, the the two crafts or trades or, you know, again, I, I know there's a lot of debate, you know, if, you know, the, where craft and art leave off, but uh, I, I'm not really going to 
get into that because that's not really what I'm oh. what what I'm talking about here because it's it's more or less the two trades of the foundry which is you know the casting the creation of this and there's there's a there's an area within that trade itself for creativity and, and art to to come into to that practice but mm -hmm. uh, for the majority of artists what what they do is they you know they'll take a piece like this this sculpture this clay sure. and they'll they'll take that to a foundry to cast and and, I, and a lot of times I, I you know this this is where a lot of people are are confused about the process and like well what do you mean you know it's like you know, it's, there's a sculpture well problem with this is it doesn't last it's it's you know it's ephemeral it's clay it's you know, this doesn't dry. It, it's fragile and mm -hmm. and non-permanent, and that's that's why, you know, you do the bronze casting is yeah. is is to you know it's it's like the recording of a of a song. You you want to have it for posterity. You want to have it to enjoy for for later. Now, are you uh, <clears throat> this is going to be uh, a, a beatific chief. Um, what's going through your mind when you're doing this? Part like do you do? I mean, uh, this might be an unfair parallel uh, because some people uh, they carve something out of or sculpt something on a piece of marble, uh, or even do something with wood, and they say the wood kind of spoke to me. You know, do you have a sense to like that with this process? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there. I'm surprised actually you would. You know. Yeah. Uh, you know because of the the fact that this is not wood. It's not something solid. It's uh, yeah. I mean, like like like. I guess with a piece of wood, uh, because it's something natural, it grows, uh, it innately has a character to it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something that's been in force for 30, 40, 50 years, and it mm -hmm. takes on a certain character. Uh, unlike this clay, which is basically a manufactured product. Um, but you know, when my, you know, when I'm when I'm doing this, I'm, you know, it's 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 kind of like if you're if you're looking at a, at clouds in the sky, you might see something that jumps out at you, except that the fact that instead of clouds, you're able to sculpt the clay and kind of sure. tease it out a bit more and bring out, mm -hmm. you know, what you see in the character. And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, just for an example with this, I might, you know, start with the, the technical knowledge of, you know, the anatomy or whatever, mm -hmm. but then I, I kind of see the character of the face and, and try to pull that out. And I see, mm -hmm. you know, a personality within that. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, and it's like, I, I get the question a lot of the times, well, who did you base that off of? Well, who was your model? And right. and you know, and people kind of get upset with me. And I say, I just made it up. I invented sure. it. Yeah. And that's that's kind of how that process works. Is mm -hmm. oh, I see something in there. And yeah, but I mean, the thing is, here is a beatific uh, uh, a chief. Uh, what does what's going on in your mind when you're doing this and relating to uh, the, uh, let's say the end product at the end of the day? Well, where this is a particular individual uh, you know historical figure um, you know I'm, I'm trying to think of you know characteristic traits you know from a I guess from an anthropological viewpoint and and what that might you know what might this person have looked like and and trying to to gather some inspiration from the from the history of of the you know the this particular uh, subject, mm -hmm. and so you know, trying trying to get into the headspace of this, uh, I find it helps to to bit, do a bit of reading and a bit of research and yeah, right. looking at you know other work that's out there, or or even just reading some of the stories a, a, about this. So so in effect, trying to capture the essence of what what it is you're you're creating. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, uh, this Beatific chief, of course, we all know about Beatics and how. Uh, uh, wasn't very pleasant at the end. Uh, is that playing a part in this sculpture here? Oh, uh, it, well, absolutely. It's uh, you know again in this this the the climate that we're we're in. I guess from you know our own history and how how we relate to the place that we live in. Um, we again we all, we're all familiar with the the Beothic story, but again I'm trying to. You know that's the power of of art is that it can it can bring to life something that's that's long lost. The imagination is you know it's a powerful thing, mm -hmm. and I think that by highlighting this and appreciating this you know this lost culture, I think it would be you know it would be great to to bring some some more 
you know, attention to it and, and thought towards, you know, what we've really lost here culturally and, you know, from a historical point of view and, and even the present. And, you know, I've, you know, oftentimes I think about, you know, what if the Beothic were still here? What if, you know, today they were, you know, with us and, you know, in modern times and what, what that would look like for the provinces. And I've often thought about, you know, at what point would I not do do this in clay? Because there's certain forms that you don't need to sculpt it in clay. Like if I were to make a cube, what what would be the point in sculpting the clay? Yes. And then and then putting all kinds of detail into that cube and and spending so much time planing down the edges in clay to make a mold of the cube, mm -hmm. when you could just buy plate and weld it together. Right. Yeah. So it's so there's you know there's a certain amount of that that you have to realize that the method that you know when you're sculpting dictates you know the end result of what you're trying to achieve. The final phase of the process consists of many steps. Stay tuned and you'll see the final product, a beautiful bronze statue. Welcome back to the last segment of the show. To get to the final stage of this whole process, there are several technical steps that have to be attended to. Let's get Morgan to walk us through it all. Uh, you know, we've, uh, we've got the clay sculpture done. Can you explain to me the process of going from that step to the final bronzing step? Um, absolutely. The, uh, uh, I think there's a, there's a disconnect in what people think about the, the process. And, you know, they, you know, they have the romantic view of the artist kind of sculpting, but, but then trying to realize what the bronze is about. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of people think you dip it in bronze or you're actually carving the bronze, but there's a process of making molds. You, you, have, to, you have to create an impression. Like bronze itself isn't physically sculpted. You don't, you're not chiseling it like it's a piece of marble or sculpting it like it's a piece of clay. So, so you know, from, from that point on, once you're, you, you have your clay s sculpture and uh, you know, the artistic, you know, the artist's vision is kind of done then and you're, you're creating a mold from that. So, so in kind of literal technical terms, you're pouring silicone over it, taking an impression of it, then you're you know, backing it up with a, uh, you know, a mother mold, which is like fiberglass or plaster. And back in the old days, it would have used a lot of plaster of Paris. And this is where, you know, the connection comes in with sculpture. But uh, once you've created that mold, uh, and, and this is where I lose a lot of people in kind of the, the thinking about the process is that you have to make another mold. So, so you know, in this, this continuum of linear steps, you know, step one is to create the clay. Step two is to create the silicone mold, which takes an impression of the clay and then you create a wax copy in the silicone mold. And, and so, the, you know, at that point, the questions I get are, well, why are you even making a wax copy? Well, the point of that is that the wax itself is, uh, because of the, the properties of the material, wax melts. It, it melts at a relatively low temperature. It lends itself to making a mold that's, that's easily used to pour bronze. So we, we melt bronze, we, we heat it up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and we literally have a pot of molten bronze at a very, very high temperature, which is dangerous to work with. And it's and it's and, and at those temperatures, there's very little. Uh, there's very few materials that that hold their structural shape. So this is why we have to make that secondary mold in, in order to bridge that gap from clay to to bronze. Is that we make a ceramic mold that that withstands those temperatures. Something on the forks. Yeah. Uh, we'll catch on fire. Okay. Keep going, keep going. Oh, 
wait a minute, that's hot. Give her a good scrape. Okay, perfect. Good. You want me to skim again? It's good. It's good. Put a curb and build it. Down. A little bit more. and that we can pour 2,000 degree Fahrenheit bronze into that won't instantly ignite the mold or ignite the clay. Because if, if you think about it logically, uh, taking liquid hot bronze and splashing it over some clay or dipping you know, your clay sculpture in a pot of molten bronze, what are you going to get? You're just going to get a fire from the clay and, mm -hmm. and you're not, you're not going to get anything that's worth, that's right. worth saving. And, and then if you think about it, the other, the other other end of the spectrum which is you take a piece of solid bronze and a big block and you carve that well that's also not conducive to creating the the kind of detail that you see in the sculpture which you know you know fingerprint level quality detail that's you know like very subtle supple kind of sculptural detail you're not going to get that with power tools or or files or chisels chiseling metal with metal it just it's not so this is where you know what this place is a lost wax foundry this this tradition of bronze casting uh, you know that that 6000 year old tradition uh, that, that that's what we're doing we're we're just con we're just a uh, one place in the long continuum uh, continuum of creating these sculptures practicing that that tradition so it's you're melting bronze and you're pouring it into a vessel that's you know the mold which will shape the the piece into the, the final sculpture that you that you want to you know have and, and you know enjoy for you know generations. So so in many, many respects now we've kind of come to the uh, the end process here with uh, this uh, sculpture. I'm always amazed that when you do have a bronze sculpture, the detail. I mean, you can see creases and crevices on this person's uh, face here and. I've seen some of the masters you've done. Someone's had a beard. You can see the hair and, and everything, you know. So it's quite a process. Appreciate it because once, you know, when you see the finished uh, piece in metal, it's it's like it's almost uh, unbelievable to that that you can have something captured in in that level of detail in something that's so, you know, durable and and you know, uh, you know impossible to That's kind right. of manipulate it's not it's not something that lends itself to mm -hmm. any kind of change and Mm -hmm. and so that's that's what's kind of well that's the appeal of it that's too. the appeal it's, of it it's timeless it's, yes it's, exactly well Morgan uh, this has been quite a quite a journey I was delight delighted to find out that we could follow this process right from the start plus to the end here we got an incredible sculpture and um, anyway it's just been a great journey and Morgan and Thanks very much for letting us in on every step of it. Oh, you're you're more than welcome, and I, I hope that uh, the viewers will will get a, a much deeper appreciation and understanding of the uh, the level of skill and and craftsmanship that goes into producing something so you know lasting and timeless. Yeah, very good. Well, thanks again. You're welcome. What a beautiful piece of art! It's been well worth the wait. See you next week.
If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media.